What's up everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna talk about Blink-182 and their bass player Mark Hoppus. Blink-182 is considered a key group in the development of pop punk. The band's combination of pop music melodies with fast-paced punk rock brought a more radio-friendly accessibility to the genre. The trio has sold over 50 million albums worldwide and in 2011 the New York Times asserted that no punk band of the 90s has been more influential than Blink-182. At the center of the band is founding member, co-lead vocalist, primary songwriter and of course bass player Mark Hoppus, whose trademark powerful trebly tone and alternate picking are an essential part of the sound of Blink-182. After primarily recording with the Fender Jazz or a Fender Precision for years, Hoppus merged the two together for the Fender Mark Hoppus Signature Jazz Bass, which debuted in 2000. The Hoppus Signature Jazz is made with a jazz bass body and a P bass neck. On Hoppus' original model, seen for the first time ever in the Adam Song music video, the pickup, a Seymour Duncan quarter pound, was in its standard position with the E and A pole pieces on top and the D and G pole pieces on the bottom. However, in 2006, Fender and Hoppus reversed the pole pieces, which Hoppus said gave it a fuller sound. In 2015, though, Hoppus switched to customized Fender Jaguar basses when performing on stage with Blink-182, although he still occasionally uses his original signature model. For live sound, Hoppus originally plugged this bass into three Ampeg s classic bass heads, running into two Ampeg 8x10 s bass cabinets. He would then switch to Ampeg SVT4 and finally, in 2016, he began using Kemper Profiler amps in concert. But besides the gear, to play like Mark Hoppus is mandatory that you familiarize with the concept of bass chords, as they are the foundation element of the majority of his bass lines. More specifically, everything happens around four easy chord shapes. The power chord, made with the root note and the fifth. The major chord, made with the root and major third. The minor chord, root and minor third. And finally, the inverted power chord. How do you get an inverted power chord? You just play the fifth one octave lower. This is really easy to play and to move around the fretboard and on top it provides an unusual and scruffy quality that makes everything more interesting. I personally love it and find myself using it all the time. Most of Blink-182 bass lines are constructed using these four chords in a number of different ways. Let's have a look. Number one, strumming chords. Most of the times chords are strummed along the guitar, adding a lot of heaviness to the parts, especially during the chorus. Now this is very unusual for a pop punk band and also quite original, a lot of bass players use power chords on a regular basis, but not on the whole chorus like that. This is episode number 37 and so far I haven't seen anybody strumming out like Hoppus, except maybe Lemmy. This is pretty cool, especially since we're talking about a power trio and the options to change the dynamics are limited. This is one good way to bring more power to the chorus without messing around with pedals and effects. Number 2, root and fifth arpeggios. Another recurring theme in the music of Blink-182 is the bass playing power chord arpeggios, which actually made up what is probably the most iconic bass line of the band.
Number 3. Major and Minor Chord Arpeggios As seen, we can't think of any of the chords we mentioned before as arpeggios instead of full-blown chords. The bassline of Always is pretty interesting in this sense, as it uses a major, a minor and a power chord, all played with the arpeggio technique. Number 4. The Hoppus Box Mark Hoppus has a favorite box, consisting of alternating the root, third, fourth and fifth degree of the scale. This lick, with the root acting as the pedal tone, is used to construct some popular Blink-182 bass lines, like Man Overboard. On Ben Wo Balls, the bass plays melody and pedal tone, but in this case the latter goes on the higher string. Speaking of pedal tone, Check out Pretty Little Girl and Josie, where the guitar acts as a pedal tone and the bass carries on all the melody of the part. Number 5. Change the octave. When playing straight root notes to add a bit of dynamics, Mark would alternate the root note and its higher octave, basically playing the same notes differently from bar to bar, like on feeling this. So, along with Mike Dirt and Green Day, Hoppus popularized the genre of pop punk and a certain way to play the bass. And though a bright and trebly tone is quite common within the genre, we can certainly say that he developed his own style. Technically impressive? Probably not. Solid, groovy and recognizable? Certainly yes. His use of chords is original and creative and fits perfectly a context of a power trio. Mark Hoppus does a great job singing well and playing the bass, which is hard enough, and whether you like Blink-182 or not, their popularity is not something that can be ignored. So he's definitely a player you want to check out. Thank you very much for watching, please subscribe, leave us a comment and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.